All right, so let's get it started. Uh, first of all, uh, major huge thank thank to our sponsors uh, that you see on the screen. So I appreciate all the support to for both organizers as well as the sponsor to make this uh, make, make this conference a reality. Um, so my name is Ali Sharifi. I'm, I'm working with Microsoft Canada, and I'm a specialist within a group that really focuses on industry cloud and cross solution areas. Uh, you can get connected with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Uh, I'm more active on LinkedIn these days compared to Twitter, but uh, yeah, just feel free to to reach out if you have any questions on LinkedIn and happy to get connected. Uh, the topic of today is going to be an overview of Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare, and we're going to go and take a look at what are the components of this cloud and uh, how Microsoft thinks about industry cloud in general uh, when we talk about like different industries that we are re releasing these cloud uh, solutions. So let's start with two simple questions. Uh, you might ask, what is Microsoft Cloud and what is Microsoft Industry Clouds? Probably everybody on the call know uh, what is Microsoft Cloud, but let me just go deeper uh, in terms of what are the clouds that we are thinking and what are the industry cloud on top of that? So the Microsoft Cloud uh, comprises of the following products uh, that are the industry leader on their own, but they're even more powerful when they're combined through integration. So these are uh, solutions such as Azure, you know, Cloud Azure, Microsoft Security, Power Platform, 360, Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, and GitHub and LinkedIn. So these are the solution and technical solutions uh, that exist out there within our cloud set. Uh, together, they enable a robust set of uh, customer solutions uh, that spans across, you know, application inf infrastructure, data and AI, all the way to business application and modern workplace uh, type of scenarios such as collaboration and, uh, and you know, uh, teams uh, scenarios. But uh, if we, but we created all these uh, these nice clouds, but uh, we also created a vertical uh, industry cloud to serve the industry specific scenarios on top of these uh, these clouds. Uh, so essentially, we're bringing together the breadth of all these Microsoft Cloud offering uh, with new capabilities, new customization, and new set of standards that are unique to these different industries. Uh, these clouds, these vertical clouds are really designed to be modular and extensible. So any organization is start, can start actually with uh, what they need uh, from these clouds and adapt as they grow at their adoption of these solutions. Uh, Microsoft Industry Cloud are also available for industries such as, you know, healthcare, uh, financial services, retail, uh, these are essentially a vertical industry cloud that Microsoft released or in the process of releasing. And, on, uh, and there's also a horizontal cloud that uh, Microsoft is using called Microsoft Cloud for Sustainability. Uh, and the reason that it's a horizontal cloud, it, it is essentially any business out there right now is caring about ESG scenarios and environmental impact. And uh, from government all the way to healthcare organization to oil and gas companies, they all uh, can benefit from that cloud for sustainability uh, that will be GA hopefully next couple of months. If we unpack on the technical level, um, the previous slide, uh, this is essentially the technical uh, solutions, how they come together to form, first of all, one Microsoft cloud, as well as all these industry cloud that will be built on top of uh, these components. So essentially when we look at healthcare cloud or financial service cloud, Essentially, uh, they bring all these components from these different solution areas into a single point of uh, vision for customers to be able to use and leverage those. And previously, uh, like I know that this this uh, session is put as part of the Dynamics track, but previously, if you look at, for instance, Dynamics CRM or Dynamics 365 sales uh, or customer service, these solutions are really uh, not tailored for any specific industries. Any organization, they have sales or customer services uh, that they can use this solution. But when we go and talk to, let's say, healthcare organization or uh, let's say banking industry, they have a specific need when it comes to their uh, customer service scenarios. And essentially the whole point of these clouds, vertical cloud are to um, make it tailored for those industries and add those customization on top of that. Now, if we focus on the healthcare, uh, Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare ha was the first industry cloud that Microsoft released last year or so, and it is really positioned to help healthcare providers uh, because within the healthcare landscape, we have different type of 
verticals, but this uh, cloud is really focused right now on the provider side of the thing, which means that mostly hospitals or uh, healthcare uh, providers within the provinces. So the healthcare industry has been uh, burdened by uh, long-standing trends like aging population, uh, provider burnout, and patient dissatisfaction. But on top of that, COVID-19 uh, pandemic added a major challenge uh, that forced many organizations to rethink about the usage of the technology. So if you look at the numbers on this slide, a 2020 survey uh, showed that number of people who use telehealth services doubled from 39% uh, all almost to 80% post pandemic and also some surveys showed that 60 or 73% of the physicians would like to continue using these you know virtual uh, telehealth services after the pandemic so there's a huge need for digitization and enabling patients remotely uh, getting connected to these healthcare providers uh, Improving patient uh, engagement requires an integrated and seamless data exchange. Uh, so it really uh, makes it really complex when we have multiple hospitals and multiple healthcare organizations. And if they don't, they're not talking to each other, there is no standard between them. It's going to be really disjointed and broken experience for patients when they transfer from one hospital to another hospital. Uh, and on top of that, uh, with all, all this data, the security is a huge challenge for many organizations. So. Even if the health organization can accurately make efficient use of this data, uh, this large volume of the data poses a big risk for, for these organizations. And on top of that, if you look at this large volume of the data for within the health organization, there are different type of data. There are on a structured data. Uh, let's imagine your images uh, or uh, your, your scans that some hospital provides. Uh, as well as these structured data that comes from many different forms. So it just makes it so hard for these health organization to uh, to make sense of this data and to be able to ingest and unify this data. So what, what is it about this health data that makes it so difficult? Let's take a look at actually a picture of how, like what are the landscape of the data within the health organization? So a typical modern health organization have data coming from uh, many sources. Uh, patient input their in personal information when they first uh, contact in their primary care providers. So if you go to ER department or if you, uh, you know, fill up a referral form, that's one of the example of that. And then that that's get, get augmented uh, with clinical data about the patient health. So health providers can also uh, compare their patient data against population health to understand a broader trend uh, affecting patient population across the across that region. And while, and while healthcare organization primary goal may be to serve a uh, patient and deliver the best care, uh, they also must manage operational data such as facility information, bed management, uh, you know, emergency room resources and stuff like that. And also supply chain will come into the play into this as well. So ingesting and managing so many different uh, form of the data requires many systems. Um, typical organization in healthcare uses EMR. Uh, which stands for electronic medical records or EHR system, uh, electronic health uh, record systems, uh, which essentially houses the structural data about the patient. So this is your patient information, your uh, PI information, your PHI information will go to the system. An example of that is Epic, Cerner, Allscript, like there are many different uh, vendors out there that provide these services. On top of this, there are on a structured data that, uh, that attach to your patient, patient profile. And these are everything from devices to sensor data to uh, imaging data, as I mentioned, to genomic data and also voice uh, data, financial data and operational data. So as you see, there's a large landscape of the data attached to, to, to a specific health organization, which essentially makes it really hard to analyze and kind of define metrics uh, and kind of define those insights out of that data. So based on these understanding of the data challenges, uh, the right system can save a lot of time and money for healthcare organizations, and it can essentially improve the data accessibility as well as improve the patient outcome uh, as the end goal of these solutions. Uh, so Microsoft is essentially trying to make it possible, trying to help these organizations by releasing uh, these industry cloud and specifically Microsoft cloud for healthcare. 
With Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare, uh, the focus is to provide a trusted and integrated capabilities to manage the health data at a scale. So if there's one hospital or many hospitals or health providers, they can store the data within these uh, applications seamlessly. And then customers uh, and health organization can enable deep, deep data analysis based on that. So these data, as I mentioned from many sources, can come to a unified place uh, to be able to kind of drive some of these uh, business processes as well as insight that you want to drive from them. We break down the Microsoft Cloud in three capabilities. Uh, three main scenarios that we, we cover as part of Microsoft Cloud is enhancing patient engagement, uh, essentially by enabling patient data to flow securely uh, across the care continuum, uh, either being patient logging into a portal uh, or having a conversation with a chatbot or sending these information through uh, some sort of a video call uh, to, a, uh, to a provider. The second pillar of, uh, of Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare is really focused on empowering the health team collaboration. As you know, if you go to some hospitals and talk to some physicians, uh, there are different methods of communication that these physicians use uh, internally as well as with their patients. Uh, some of them, they use text messages. Some of them, they use the sticky notes. Uh, there are instances that I've seen they, they use um, uh, WhatsApp group chats, which is not really compliant. and uh, essentially, the goal of this this component is to uh, make it faster, make it easier to coordinate the care, as well as make the collaboration much easier between the care providers and physician, as well as the patients. Uh, now that we have all the data within the same platform, uh, driving the insight and uh, uniting this data from the different data silos is one of the goals of the platform. Uh, it not only brings the data from the EMR and the EHR system, but it also brings the data from uh, other similar data sources, you know, on a structured data sources such as images or genomic data into, into the same platform for analytics scenarios. And all of this is built on top of a, uh, a foundation of protecting the health information because the highest level of uh, criticality of the data is PHI and PII information. And Essentially, that uh, protection of the data, security, compliance, and privacy is top of mind when we talk to the customer to store some of these data within the cloud platforms. So let's look at the core capabilities aligned to these scenarios. Uh, I will uh, go through uh, some of these uh, components. There are essentially nine capabilities that are enabled through uh, our uh, provider-centric customer scenarios. Uh, essentially, these capabilities are Composable and customers can pick and choose of which component of these uh, solutions they want to use or which one they want to enable first. They don't have to go all in. Uh, for instance, if you look at enhanced patient engagement, these are mostly customer facing scenarios uh, that enables these uh, patient to access uh, information uh, and also access some sort of a self-service tools. Meaning that in this case, for instance, a customer can enable those pieces and uh, further down the line, they can go and add new features for care coordination or uh, IoT scenarios with continuous patient monitoring. And all the features that we release essentially uh, is really tied to these uh, uh, three pie charts that you see and all these uh, components within each one of those pie charts. Before going to the features, uh, let me unpack uh, the cloud itself and explain how it comes to life. Uh, so if you look at the, the bottom of this slide, uh, we have more, uh, essentially Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare is, is built on top of Azure, Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, and Power Platform. It is a cross-solution type of uh, solution. Uh, the, these, uh, these clouds are extended by this extension layer that you see on top of it. Uh, that has features that makes this, uh, this these offering really suitable for healthcare organization, and essentially it verticalizes uh, this solution for healthcare orgs. This in includes, for instance, health APIs. So if you have, if you want to standardize and make it uh, into a prop, in, make it really available for multiple organizations to access the data, this data and share the data, the healthcare API and uh, the standards such as Fire and, and HL7 allows you to uh, publish this data securely for uh, many different use cases. For instance, there's also component within Teams uh, 
uh, to for secure messaging and uh, access to some of the pre-built template within Teams for lists or tasks and things like that that you can use within the healthcare organization to uh, access those pre-built pre component. There are a few Power Apps component within the solution, as well as the uh, modified first-party dynamic solution and apps. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, to make this solu solution really relevant for healthcare organization. For instance, we have customer service within the solution. We have also a field service uh, component within the solution. <coughs> Excuse me. To make it really suitable for these healthcare organization to be able to um, access the patient information at the right time. Now, let's maybe start with the uh, first feature set, which is enhanced patient engagement. Uh, just a moment. <clears throat> so in terms of the uh, enhancing patient engagement, Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare enabled the data to flow uh, securely through every point of care continuously. And uh, this includes involving patient in, in the care process and giving them the tools to access uh, and be able to access these data, data securely and providing them some sort of a self-service type of features to be able uh, for them to be able to go and see their appointment, access their health information securely, and also provide like virtual health type of scenarios for those patients. Uh, from the healthcare perspective, uh, this pillar really focuses on driving better health outcomes by establishing a 360 view of the patient information. So essentially really focusing on how can we bring all this data and put uh, one pane of glass in front of the patient and in front of the uh, a physician to be able to see what's happening with that patient. Uh, I'm just going to roll a video for this one, which is kind of interesting to see how it will come to life. So uh, probably I need to share back to include my system voice, so apologies. Hopefully you can see, I'm just going to roll the video and. As virtual health technology becomes more common, many healthcare organizations are looking for new opportunities to leverage it with patients like Retta. Retta has a history of type one diabetes and has been experiencing increased fatigue and anxiety at work. She's been reluctant to get more help and see a doctor because it's been so much work in the past. Before, Retta would have to wait on hold for a call center operator to direct her questions to the appropriate care team and then wait again for the next steps. But now, Retta can visit her care system's patient portal for guidance, which directs her to a virtual chatbot to answer some of her questions. She doesn't have to wait in line for a call center, and it helps reduce her time waiting for a care provider. The virtual bot asks her some questions about her identity and symptoms. Retta provides the information, and the health bot helps her schedule a virtual visit with her care team later that day. Retta receives an appointment confirmation and reminder with a secure, pre-populated registration form based on her previous information from the health bot. She doesn't have to spend time refilling out forms, and this reduces the burden on her care team by collecting and sharing this information ahead of her appointment. With a friendly reminder automatically sent to her phone, Retta is 30% more likely to make her appointment on time. Retta has provided the link to the virtual lobby, which she can join from her phone, laptop, or tablet. Babak, an on-call practitioner, receives a notification of an upcoming appointment with Retta. Before the appointment, he can prepare with a comprehensive view of Retta's health history and her most recent chat details from the virtual bot. Once on the call, he's able to seamlessly update her record alongside the call. Automatic appointment reminders and seamless integration with his patient's records alleviate the stress of searching for this information and allow him to focus on what matters, building a strong patient-provider relationship. Once the call is complete, Jim, Retta's care manager, is automatically notified of the changes to Retta's records, allowing him to update Retta's care plan accordingly. He refers her account to the patient service center, which notifies Retta that her care plan has been updated and assists in scheduling an appointment with an endocrinologist. Interconnected tools and a 360 view of patient records empower Jim to make care decisions confidently, ensuring Retta is in good hands and increasing her patient satisfaction with their services. With effective coordination between care providers, Retta's needs are met and she can return to work with reduced anxiety, knowing she's supported every step of the way. 
Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare provides trusted and integrated cloud capabilities to help healthcare organizations enhance patient engagement, empower health team collaboration, and improve clinical and operational insights. Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare is built on a trusted platform that supports healthcare organizations to protect health information and helps to enable our customers to meet their compliance requirements for HIPAA, GDPR, and more. All of this is built with the desired outcome of delivering better patient experiences, better insights that drive positive change, and better overall care across the entire care journey. Awesome. Hopefully that's, uh, that video painted a picture. I'll try to see if the time permits. I will bring up actually a demo hopefully in the next few minutes and I'll go uh, in more details in some of the component of the cloud. But as, as I mentioned in the previous, uh, previous slide, the first pillar of Microsoft Cloud for healthcare is enhancing patient engagement. And essentially the focus here is to uh, provide the personalized care uh, for these patients. So typically when I need to go and see a doctor, you probably need to go and fill up a form. In many cases, fax that form or send email that form, uh, those scenarios. So essentially the purpose here is to eliminate those manual steps and enable patients to be able to access some sort of a portal, which in this case technology wise is the Power Apps portal to enable, to enable them to actually take a look at their um, patient information as well as being able to book their virtual visits for future uh, future appointments. This will allow the patients to also receive communication or send notes to their doctors through this central portal. And on top of that, we also included the virtual health bot, which is a secure uh, Azure bot that enables patients having a conversation with the agents, uh, either through the agents or virtual chat bots as part of the solution. Within this solution, as you saw, for, for a physician, uh, it's quite important to be able to see a 360 view of the patient. And this patient view essentially bring the data from many data sources and present this in, in this Power Apps uh, within, within the Power Platform uh, to be able to see this uh, single view of all the information uh, in, this, in this screen. So this data uh, in the background comes from the Azure Fire. Uh, which essentially is connected to the EMR system or could be connected to many different systems of the record. So as I said, EMR is one data source. There are uh, imaging, there are um, genomic data and things like that that can come to the play to present this uh, 360 view of the, of the patient. And uh, last but not least, uh, the virtual health pieces essentially allows the customers and patients to uh, access uh, remotely to their healthcare providers. And for, for the physician perspective, there's also a component that's being released by Microsoft, which is called EHR, EHR Connector with Teams, which essentially adds Teams, uh, invites and Teams component within their EMR on EHR application. So for instance, if they're using Epic system, they can go and install Microsoft team extension to their Epic system, and this allows them to just run the Teams meeting right from their EHR applications, and it just allows them to focus on that patient outcome instead of jumping between different, different applications. So um, let me see if I can bring up a, a view of this, uh, some of these components into the mix here. So uh, I will start with the uh, patient portal. So just a moment, let me just uh, move my screen around. Perfect. Hopefully you can see this uh, this web page. Essentially, this is a uh, Power Apps portal, and right now I'm logged in as Patty, who is the patient. As a patient, I can take a look as at different component of this this application. I can see the list of messages that I received from my healthcare providers. I can go and also create a new message and send these messages over. I can access uh, any upcoming appointment that I have uh, with, with different healthcare providers, or I can go on and request a new appointment as part of this process. So uh, th these components essentially allows me to go and uh, book a specific uh, physician that is assigned to my uh, care plan, or I can actually go and have a specific meetings with, uh, for, a specific, for different type of reasons that I want to meet with a physician. There are components for medical records, so essentially these are all coming from a uh, your the, the actually the organization EMR and EHR information. So as you see here, uh, you can see uh, many different components uh, within this data model. So 
list of allergies you might have. You can go and update them. All these medication that you're taking all uh, being stored in a central place, then a uh, patient that can access, uh, then can access these medication information uh, within this platform. I can also go and update my personal information right from this screen. Uh, on top of that, there's also a chat component, uh, the secure chat to be able to uh, talk to different agents and ask questions. So for instance, in this case, if I come here and uh, type down, for instance, um, I twisted my knee when I was when I was running, and then, then the chatbot can actually uh, ask me, do you want to do I want to get connected to a, a specialist, or if I want to continue using Azure Healthbot for Q and A type of scenarios? So in this case, since my knee is injured, I'm going to go and say I want to talk to a specialist, uh, which essentially uses omnichannel in the background uh, to get me connected uh, to a uh, an agent on the call center or a uh, yeah a call center scenario. So to verify my name, um, I'm just going to provide my name, my uh, date of birth, uh, as well as uh, possibly I think my address too. So I'm just going to put my address into the mix here uh, for verification. And essentially now the uh, health bot will uh, uh, will get me connected to a uh, to an agent actually in this case. So if I bring a view of the a uh, Omnichannel here, I can see that this uh, chat came in. If I accept the chat as an agent, so now I'm playing the role of the healthcare provider. I can get connected to the patient and see the history of the conversation uh, right from this screen. So typical omnichannel scenarios, uh, you can see the knowledge base, you can search as an agent on the knowledge base and bring all that information. But what is powerful here, which is kind of bit different compared to uh, what we have in, let's say, customer service scenario, is this main window that you see on the screen here. So I can go on as a as a physician or as an agent, I can come here and see many different areas that are really tied, for, tied, uh, tied to the healthcare uh, industry. So I can see, for instance, what's the history of this patient? If there is any uh, profile activities, I can see all of these trends here. Uh, if there was a pain level that I reported before, I can see as a physician what are the pain levels and any interactions that I had through that portal will be all uh, summarized here within this application. As a physician, I can also go and respond back. Maybe uh, here I just uh, uh, looking at the uh, patient here. Uh, I can go and based on the history, it says that they have a knee injury. So I can go and search the, search the uh, uh, knowledge base articles to be able to find if, if we can find any uh, twisted knee, for instance, injury within the knowledge base and, uh, and kind of paste it for that patient. So if I come back to uh, knowledge base search, I can search the specific keywords and uh, I can take a look at this article and copy and paste it for a patient for, for future use. But on this side, the patient can see this and they can actually decide to book an appointment or maybe this will be suffice for them to, to wrap up this, this conversation. <clears throat> so coming back to the slides, um, uh, there are components also. The second, the second pillar of this solution is really focused on uh, providing uh, care collaboration between the healthcare physicians as well as the conversation between the patient and uh, and and their physician. So essentially, the the, the component that comes to the play here is mostly uh, secure messaging between the teams, uh, as well as how we can also bring some IoT conversation into the mix. So how can we uh, provide let's say very variable devices for these patients to be able to uh, uh, provide those remote monitoring information to the healthcare provider. As part of the uh, team collaboration, there's also a few templates that comes with Microsoft 365 for task management and scheduling that are really uh, built for healthcare organizations. So uh, for instance, uh, the secure messaging is one component that you have templates within teams that you can use, as well as the uh, task management that are really built for, for healthcare organization to be able to manage the task and approvals. And on, in terms of the home health, uh, there's also a component for virtual visits. Uh, that that any any healthcare provider can enable for patients to be able to use and uh, go through that. 
for physicians, the care management is quite interesting uh, because this allows them to uh, set up the care plan for, for a specific patient uh, using the Power Platform interface here. So if I bring that, bring up the application again uh, and just show you the uh, care uh, care coordination component. This is a uh, solution that's being built uh, to be able to uh, defining the care plans and uh, also the activities that needs to happen for a specific patient. So as a physician, you can go and search uh, the patient that you are looking for. In this case, Patty was the person. I can go and open up the Patty's record and I can take a look at the full history uh, of, of Patty interaction with the organization as well as all this data that are coming from many different places. So this is really nice, uh, nice kind of single pane of glass for, for physician to to access all the different information that they required. So quickly going through this, uh, maybe this view, I can see who, who are the care team that are assigned to Patty. So I can take a look at um, uh, different surgeries. Uh, who's been the people being involved in the in providing care to Patty. Uh, I can take a look at care plans. Essentially, these are different steps or different plans that physicians will work with the patient to provide. And uh, you can also go and complete or pause any one of these care plans that you provide. There's also a component of metrics and KPIs that you can drive and you can see uh, how Patty is doing against different metrics or different care plans that's being assigned. Within the application, there is trend analysis. Uh, essentially, this data that are coming from many different sources to this central place allows a physician to map out the patient specifically to the population health and kind of drive some insight from that. So, for instance, with Patty, a uh, physician can see the gender, kind of compare the data between for, for her age and her condition with many different patients across the continuum. And this will definitely help, help the physicians to be able to make uh, proper decisions uh, when they are looking at the population health in general. There are so many components here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but uh, there are also a click through uh, items that uh, within the healthcare industry cloud that you can go and take a look. But there are so many useful dashboards that if you talk to your customers or if you're a health organization, you can benefit from many of these. So for instance, this section is really focused on the Azure IoT and how we can bring that data in the central place to be able to see the trends, or if you have any variables, you can see many different metrics within these dashboards. So we talked about the IoT devices. It essentially uses Azure IoT to uh, kind of aggregate this data and bring them all to the surface. On the... Um, Analytical piece of the conversation, uh, driving the insight from the data and also providing the, providing the interop between these many different organizations is top of mind. And as you saw on the previous uh, screen within that care management application, all that data actually are coming through this Azure Fire server uh, underneath uh, to, to this Dynamics and Power Platform application. So essentially the data is core part of this, although it's not really visible and demoable, but in the architecture in the next few slides, I will show how you, how this data will be aggregated using different Azure components and be surfaced within the uh, business application at the top. I'm just gonna roll another video to paint that picture and uh, we can go from there. The average healthcare system produces over 50 petabytes of data every year across multiple siloed systems. As the exponential growth of healthcare data continues, healthcare organizations must manage operational data to maintain their facilities and ensure the efficient delivery of care. Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare connects these data systems to empower your organization with clinical and operational insights. Jim is a care manager working directly with providers and patients to assure the patient's needs are met with proper care. He has been providing care for Grace, who's been diagnosed with COPD, a chronic inflammatory lung disease. His dashboard indicates that Grace's profile needs attention based on data collected from IOMT devices, such as heart rate, activity levels, oxygen levels, and COPD indexing models. Jim reaches out to Grace for an unscheduled wellness check via Teams. Based on Grace's history with COPD, her IOMT data, and her description of her symptoms, Jim asks Grace to visit her hospital for additional testing. With Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare, providers can leverage operational analytics to improve staff management, use of resources, and patient care. 
all while meeting the industry's compliance and security needs. While Grace is on the way to the hospital, Jerry, an emergency department admin, reviews his ED dashboard for operational metrics about patient wait times and resource utilization. He can also see expected arrivals within the next hour. By reviewing Grace's profile, he can quickly understand Grace's pre-existing medical conditions, such as COPD, and start prepping for her arrival. He aligns the necessary accommodations for Grace, including an isolation room and equipment, and makes sure the appropriate care provider is available to receive Grace when she arrives. As the resident on-call pulmonologist, Irene is assigned to evaluate Grace. Viewing Grace's profile, she gets a 360-degree view of her medical information, including IOMT data, EHRs, and notes from previous visits. Irene looks at a recent chest imaging report generated by a machine learning model. It indicates Grace's condition is likely early-onset pneumonia, but is still awaiting review by a radiologist. Irene reviews socioeconomic factors that could affect Grace's recovery. She also receives insights from the Population Health Dashboard, which provides the ability to compare effectiveness of treatment plans for patients with similar demographics and conditions. Data-driven insights help Irene to make an informed decision to determine the best course of care for Grace, leading to a successful recovery and allowing her to return home in a timely manner. Shortly after being discharged from the hospital, Grace receives an email linking to a care satisfaction survey on the patient portal page. By filling it out, she helps providers gather valuable feedback across their patient populations. While in the patient portal, Grace reviews her treatment plan. She sees updated medications and can find a referral for an in-home respiratory therapy. She can also access education materials and recommendations to make progress at home. All of this helps her stay engaged and up to speed on her health and wellness journey. Chris is the hospital admin at Contoso Healthcare, directly responsible for making sure hospital operations run efficiently while maintaining the highest quality of care for patients like Grace. With a snapshot of hospital operations and rapid analytics, he reviews list admissions, discharges, patient encounters, and readmissions. Taking a closer look at the readmission data, he can see that the pulmonology readmission rate is trending up. He reviews insights and reports for pulmonology and compares it against other key metrics such as staff to patient ratio and patient sentiment. With this information in hand, Chris starts a conversation with the head of the pulmonology department to collaborate on how to improve their readmission rate. By catching the trend early, Chris can mitigate the risk before it causes financial or operational problems for the hospital. Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare helps your organization connect data from across systems, creating insights to predict risk, help improve patient care, and analyze clinical and operational data for reporting, real-time assessment, and ongoing quality improvement. Built on a trusted platform that supports healthcare organizations to protect health information, Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare helps to enable our customers to meet their compliance requirements for HIPAA, GDPR, and more. All of this is built to help healthcare organizations deliver better patient experiences, better insights, and better care. Perfect. And uh, to deliver that uh, security and component of that, obviously Microsoft has been investing a lot on security and compliance. And essentially, uh, from from our perspective, the security of this data and these components is top of mind. So uh, there, and then as the video mentioned, there are different uh, uh, GDPR or you know a PHI type of standard that we all adhere to. So uh, the security, compliance, and privacy has been uh, kind of top of mind and the platform actually is built to leverage all those uh, cloud as assets to be able to make sure that the data is secure. What is beautiful about these uh, these components and these clouds is that there's been a, a central place to be able to deploy these solutions. Uh, so if you if you go to, uh, let me just bring it up here on the screen quickly. So if you go to solutions.microsoft.com, uh, anybody with Dynamics or uh, Power Platform access can, can go and log into this, uh, to this page. And essentially this is uh, a central place which is called Solution Center that allows a organization to go and deploy these different components. Because these clouds, as we discussed earlier, has component from many different com uh, solution areas such as Teams, uh, Azure Fire Server, Dynamics, and Power Platform, it, we kind of work to put them all in a, in a package and some sort of orchestrator to be able to make it easier to deploy these on the customer tenant. For instance, and as you see on this, this screen, we have 
uh, different component here. We have nonprofit, financial services, retail, and healthcare. So if I go to the healthcare, you can see the modular modularity of of the solution. So we can go and take a look. Of uh, I, uh, oops, uh, I just got signed out. But essentially, what you see there is um, a different component that you can you can install as part of this. So let me just see if I can sign back in. Uh, just a moment. Okay, I think my session died. But anyhow, uh, this concept of solution center just makes it much easier. As you see on the screen here, you can pick and choose which component of the cloud you, that you want to install on your tenant, and this essentially will uh, allow you to install those. The other component that is quite interesting and important is the data models. So as you know, common data model and common data service, Dataverse now is called, uh, is critical piece of uh, standardizing some of these industry cloud. And the beauty is that all of these uh, data models are going to be open source in GitHub. So if you're a health organization and you want to kind of learn how these data mo models come into the play, you can go and download those schemas from the GitHub and start playing around and build your own solution as well on top of that. This is really high level on the architecture of the uh, conceptual architecture of the cloud. Again, there are many different components for each one of those uh, uh, pieces of pie, like you know, enhanced patient engagement or collaboration and things like that. They're like a similar type of architecture, but if you look at the bottom layer here on this screen, uh, the data points are uh, coming from many di different data sources. Uh, so we have the data sitting on EMR and EHR system. This is the patient information. Uh, there's IoT devices for healthcare. They call it IOMT in terms of medical uh, things. Uh, we have scheduling information. Maybe some of them are in Kronos, some of them in SAP or PeopleSoft. <coughs> there are ERP systems that needs to push this data. As you see, there is a broader spectrum of the data points, points that needs to come into the play to be able to have a unified view. All of this will come into the Azure uh, healthcare APIs, uh, or they also call it Azure Fire or uh, Azure Fire Server. Essentially, this allows you to unify this data and put some, some sort of a standard API around this data. Once that's, uh, that comes into the Azure Fire within the Azure platform, this data will be uh, synced with, with Power Platform and Dataverse. There's a sync agent uh, that's being built to seamlessly uh, bring this data from, from the Azure platform to Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. Uh, apologies about the wording here. The naming has changed and my slide is a bit old, so this is called Dataverse. Uh, but essentially, this allows you to uh, bring this data to life through this business application uh, and uh, either being Dynamics or Teams or Power Platform. This allows you to run these business application tailored to the healthcare industry as part of this. There are a few other components on top of the Power Platform Dynamics. For instance, there are web resources, there are customization that you saw on the screen, for instance, as you looked at the care management application, there are specific data models that comes into the play. Uh, and uh, this will also use this Power Platform, a Power Apps portal to enable the patients to access this information through that portal and customer uh, type of uh, journeys right there. We also use Azure HealthBot for communication between the Power Apps portal and, uh, and the, the underlying technology. And there are also components for care management and the machine learning that comes into the play when we have this data sitting on Azure. Hopefully that paints the picture of uh, what exists within the cloud. This is just some architecture, but there's definitely way more component when we discuss the uh, architecture of the solution. With that, uh, I'm going to pause. Uh, and uh, this 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 has been great. Thank you so much for uh, for having me on the call. If there is any questions, feel free to come off mute or uh, or just put them in the chat. I'm happy to answer them. And I think there's also a component for um, for surveys. So uh, feel free to uh, fill up the survey. I think the, the numbers that I have is this number three zero one five eight zero. But uh, yeah, we would appreciate if, if you also go ahead and submit the surveys for this. Thank you, Ali. A wonderful session, Ali. Ali, I have a question here. Go ahead, please. Uh, so is it like we need to buy some services or is it like a licensing for user? Right, great question. Um, uh, 
So in terms of the healthcare cloud, the licensing is a bit different compared to the other healthcare cloud. For instance, if you look at financial services, it's a tenant license that you purchase. For healthcare, since it was the first cloud that's been released, it's per user. Uh, so essentially, it's going to be a per user uh, type of license that needs to be purchased on top of whatever component that you need to have. So if you search, for instance, if you search on a Google Microsoft Cloud for healthcare licensing, there's a sheet actually that explain all the different components. So depending on, let me go back actually to that slide uh, to kind of give you a bit more details. Uh, just, just a moment. Okay, so this is a good slide to kind of, uh, paint a picture here. Okay, so oops, let me swap. Okay, so as you see on this screen, depending on which component of the cloud you want to use, let's say you want to do uh, omni-channel, you probably need to have some dynamics component. Uh, if you want to do, for instance, virtual visits and things like that, you need uh, Azure plus, let's say, some component from Microsoft 365. So in many cases, organizations have these licenses. And if, for instance, they want to do some sort of specific use cases with dynamics, let's say field service for scheduling or uh, omni-channel type of scenario, they need to have those licenses. And on top of that, they need to also have this uh, about healthcare. Uh, oh, right. have, like, agents. Uh, the omni-channel uh, and they need to have a license yeah but there's a matrix there's a there's a chart that you can definitely i don't have it handy here apologies but if you google it there's a pdf that typical you know licensing guides for dynamics and power plat there's one for microsoft cloud for healthcare that you can download and it has like a matrix in it that says for each one of these pieces of the pie what do you need to uh need to kind of enable within your tenant what what license is required for that Oh yeah, that's perfect. Thank you so much, Ali. And thank you for presenting today. It was an amazing session. I think it's something new to learn today about Microsoft Health. Yeah, it is definitely an area that uh, Microsoft is investing heavily. Yeah. Uh, so industry cloud is the name of the game. Uh, I'm not sure if you heard, but if you look at Satya's converse, uh, you know, all hands or Satya's, uh, you know, different conferences like Ignite and things like that. Industry cloud is a, an area that Microsoft wants to lean in. And essentially it makes sense because previously I'm coming from consulting background myself. We used to go and you know sell, let's say CRM to an yes. insurance company and you need to spend six months, one year to customize that CRM application for insurance. And we saw the pain, the customers asking for it and saying that, why don't you have like a specific solution for our industries? That's why we have like healthcare coming up. We have financial services. We also have retail and a few others coming up. So true. It just makes it much easier to tell that story to customers. Yep, that's so true. There's really nice one coming up, I guess, for Microsoft also. Uh, they can uh, have all healthcare behind them if they can get it up properly on the market. Well, thank you so much for joining today. Yeah. Sorry, are you, are you were saying something? Oh, so I was just saying that you're cutting out. I just uh, disconnected my video because you were cutting out. But yeah, th thank you so much. Thank you for so much for questions. And uh, if there is anything, just connect me on LinkedIn and happy to continue the conversation. Thank you, Ali. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Thanks, everybody.